Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, it's just me and you. In this short episode, I'm going to dive into a theme that I wrote about recently in my newsletter. So if you're not in the newsletter community, make sure you check it out. Jump onto the link in my bio at Primal Pro on Instagram. Um, And that topic is struggle. So first of all, just let me make something very, very abundantly clear. I am not an expert in any one of these topics by any stretch of the imagination. What I'm doing with this podcast, and specifically what I'm doing with these smaller bite-sized solo podcasts, is just sharing my journey and my interpretation of the experiences I've had with you. Because the whole reason I set up this company, this podcast, this kind of movement, this community, was to try and empower myself and potentially empower anybody who wants to listen. Because in my own life, I have had access to content, podcasts, people and communities that have massively changed the way that I live my life. And I'm telling you right now, this is the honest truth. It has literally transformed who I am as a person and the trajectory of my entire life. So that's what I'm doing here. Everything I say here is based on my own experience and potentially there's something in this that you might learn. As human beings, struggle is inevitable. This is what I have learned. This is what I have seen. Struggle is a part of it. It's part of the game. As Chris Williamson would say, it's part of the code. It's not a glitch. It is actually part of what we are. It's who we are. It's part of life. But when you're in the struggle and when I've been in the struggle, it's very, very hard to suddenly gain that perspective, to suddenly be enlightened and realize, oh yeah, okay, this is just part of it. That's okay. So what I'm going to share with you today is how I personally have learned to shift the way I approach struggle, to shift the way I actually view struggle, I literally see it through a completely different lens now. So if you don't know me, if you don't know my particular story, and for context for the point I'm going to make here, what you kind of need to know is I haven't always been involved in this world, doing podcasts, making content, running my own business. Um, Over the course of a decade in my 20s, I essentially worked for someone else. I worked as part of a team. I worked in the medical industry um, and it was fantastic and I learned lots and lots of lessons in there. However, I constantly experienced, like everybody else in this world, struggle in my life. What I'm learning now is a huge amount of that struggle was down to how I viewed it, my own perspective on the things I was going through. Because realistically, my life was pretty damn good. I had a very good upbringing. I have fantastic parents, a super support system, great friends, a brilliant relationship. However, I still struggled. And I'm sure this is probably ringing true for many people who are listening to this episode right now. I still struggled. And a lot of that struggle was within my own head. The reason that I struggled was challenges that I inevitably came up against, which we all face, all shapes and sizes every single day became much bigger versions of what they actually were, number one, and also represented something different to me. I was a victim, essentially. We've all heard this phrase, victim mentality, but for me, what that meant was I would look at a challenge, I would look at an obstacle, I would look at something that came up in my life that presented some sort of resistance to me, and immediately in my head, I would view myself as the victim of that obstacle or the victim of that challenge. So I started to struggle. And the struggle to me was purely negative. There was nothing positive about this experience for me. So to give you an example, potentially there was an issue in work or an issue in my relationship. And as soon as that issue arose, my interpretation of that was, this is something negative that's come along to ruin my life. This is something negative that's come along to upset me or frustrate me. And I would get upset or get frustrated. Now, how that manifested is a different story. The outcome of that is a different story. Now, however, I'm starting to understand First of all, that I did have a victim mentality. So this wasn't something that I was naturally gifted with, what I'm about to explain now. Um, And second of all, that I owe a lot of my perspective now to stuff like this, to podcasts, to people who've been vulnerable about this, to people who've opened up, to mentors I've had, to friends I now have, who have helped me to understand that all of those challenges are a part of life. All of those challenges are things that many people go through and much, much worse. And let me clarify that people go through way, 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 way worse stuff than I've gone through in my life. But what completely changes the entire outlook and the entire outcome of the struggle that we experience is our perspective. Now, you'll hear me use this word a lot, perspective, perspective. But for me, it's a key piece um, in pretty much everything that we do. So that shift really started for me when I began to run my own business, Primo. I'm sitting in the studio right now. And what I learned by starting this business, um, learned many lessons, but keeping it really, really specific to the idea of struggle is that while this is an extremely difficult thing personally for me to do, some people might find it easy, but personally for me, building a business is extremely difficult. All of the challenges that I'm presented with, all of the struggles I have to go through, they're mine. I own them. So anything good that happens in here, 
fantastic. That's mine. But everything bad that happens in here, it's my responsibility. Might not be my fault, but it's my responsibility. And that presents a massive amount of struggle. It presents personal struggle because you have imposter syndrome. You don't feel like you're good enough. You feel out of place. I didn't have business experience. I didn't really know what I was doing. I still don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but that presents a a kind of a, an identity issue for you. You feel like a fraud and that is a constant struggle. You have money issues. You have financial struggle. You have... Um, personnel issues because you're meeting people you're trying to engage with people and meet them at their level and understand them so there's there's constant struggle there trying to understand how you interact with people there's struggle literal physical struggle when you're in building the business trying to learn things and put things together and understand how to build systems there's all these different types of struggle but the big shift and the big realization for me early on was they are mine i own them and there is a certain degree of control i have over those things um, to borrow a phrase or a concept from the Stoics, if anyone is familiar with Stoic philosophy, what I'm learning from Stoicism, what, what I started to learn through building the business was that the control that you have exists in how things are interpreted. So most feelings that we have, most um, most of the impact that our emotions and our feelings have on us is within our control. The feelings aren't necessarily in our control. The triggers aren't necessarily in our control. And they are things we can work on. But how we interpret those feelings and how we interpret, for example, that imposter syndrome, how we interpret interactions with other people, how we interpret um, our financial difficulties is completely up to us. And from a stoic perspective, what I'm learning is gaining some sort of control over how you interpret those emotions and over over, over how you in, uh, manage the situations that you get into starts to give you back a huge amount of self-empowered um, you have the impact over these things and you, you feel empowered and you feel in control so self-mastery is the concept I'm, I'm trying to get at here um, when you master your own mind this idea of self-mastery you change what that struggle means so again using my example here of the business now when I came up against these challenges or now sitting right here when I come up against these challenges, because it wasn't like this at the start, I view these challenges that have not changed. They've actually gotten more difficult. I have more challenges now than I did at the start because as this grows, the challenges and the problems grow. New levels, new devils, as they say. But now what I view those challenges as are part of this journey because if I struggle, I know if I'm able to manage that struggle, if I'm able to manage my emotions when it comes to the struggle, on the far side, there's growth. And that could be growth in terms of business. It could be growth in terms of um, person, personal growth. It could be growth in terms of community. So now I now interpret that type of struggle completely differently. And what it's done for my sense of peace of mind is outrageous. It is a complete flip for me now. Rather than being the victim in this business, now I am empowered. Now I own this struggle. This is what it is for me. When I come in here to work, obviously there's many brilliant things about running a business, but now I know when I come in here to work, struggle is one of those brilliant things for me. So it's the same difficulties I'm having. And as I said, even bigger difficulties, but how I interpret them is completely different. I own them. They belong to me. And I know that on the far side of that struggle, which is part of this game, there is growth and it's the growth that I'm looking for. So that's one example in my my particular story, how a business, for example, it doesn't have to be a business. This is just a proxy for pretty much everything we do in our lives. But for me, that's how I started to understand this. Once I understand, once I started to understand that this was a possibility in terms of changing the perspective on it, things like the stoicism that I mentioned earlier really started to make sense. They started to fall into place. So now I was able to listen to the teachings of these people who've gone before and really apply that and understand how in the context of what I do, it's very, very relevant. Whereas before, it was just a lot of this idea of mental masturbation. You'd read it, it sounds great, sounds pretty cool. Seneca said this, so deadly, I've read it now. But there was no real link for me to my real life because I'd still be getting frustrated, still be in that victim mentality. Whereas now, I read a passage from the Daily Stoic or somebody mentions one of these quotes from, from, from Marcus Aurelius or somebody like that. And I can actually see in my own life how that knowledge can be applied and a huge amount of this is around that mastery of your perspective and your interpretation of the emotions you feel when you come up against that struggle so it actually completely changes how you view this struggle and as i said once you change that perception it's a different thing you're living your life in a completely different way now you might say that's amazing dan that mentality is amazing but we don't all have that that's not realistic that's not normal for people and i'd actually argue that because if you look at what we value in society Think about the example of somebody you know who's been handed everything they have. Now, again, I have nothing against people who have... I've had massive, massive health in my life. I'd have massive health in business, so I have nothing against that. However, 
if you look at somebody like that versus somebody who has really grinded and earned what they have, where does your respect lie? Almost every single one of you will immediately think you admire and respect that person who is grounded out. You, you admire that because they've conquered their own struggle. You admire that because you recognize how difficult that is because you know how difficult it is to earn things, whatever it is, in physical pursuits, in relationships, in business, in work. You know how difficult it is to earn those things, to earn that respect. So that's where our respect goes. It's, it goes to the people who we know have earned it. And everybody knows, is familiar with the, the, the this picture of the trust phone kid rocks up in his new beamer and we go particularly in Ireland begrudgery we're like fuck this guy in his new beamer because we don't believe that's earned so we do place value on the struggle we do place value on the struggle all of us it's just about understanding that that's within us because as I explained it was within me I just had to do something to realise it was within me and now I have some guidance with us as well Um, Seneca one of these philosophers these stoic philosophers says that he admires the man who has won a victory over the meanness of his own nature and has not gently led himself, <coughs> excuse me, but has wrestled his way to wisdom. The wrestling, the struggle, people who have stood up and embraced the struggle, they're the people that we admire. And when we do it ourselves, again, we start to rewire the way we look at the struggle because now we start to admire ourselves. It's not pride and it's not necessarily ego, but we start to understand that this is a good thing for me to do. And if you admire yourself for doing those things, you're more likely to do it. So again, you change your relationship with that struggle. Another lesson to learn from the likes of Seneca and the and the, um, the, the Stoic philosophers. So to get into the actual meat and bones of this episode, again, you might be sitting there saying, well, that's fantastic, Dan. That's your story. Fair play to you. You're on this journey. Brilliant. All this personal growth. But how do you make this realistic? How do you do this for you? How do you inspire this change within yourself? Where do you even start? We have to learn how to change our perspective. And again, that's a bit of a catchphrase. But an interesting um, concept I heard lately from Alex Hermosi. You might know Alex Hermosi's podcast called The Game. He's got a book called $100 Million Offers. Um, He's a bit of a a business mogul who focuses a lot on the mindset of a business owner because ultimately it is you and your mindset that's going to change the the outcomes for yourself it's not fancy business techniques or branding or marketing it's your mindset and again i know i'm laboring the business point here but again it's just a proxy for many other things in our lives alex ramosi has this concept and uses the phrase this is what hard feels like so in order for us to change our relationship with struggle we first need to understand that this is what it is. This is struggle. Sometimes when you're in it, that perspective piece, that the way you view it is off. We're looking at it from inside, from trapped inside our emotions. So we need to be able to develop the tools to become a little bit more impartial, to step back and become the observer of our own thoughts. Some of the conversation around this, um, this becoming an observer of your thoughts, focuses on things like meditation and breath work, routines to give yourself some space and time when you're not constantly being barred from, from information. And that is absolutely really, really valuable. And it's been a part of my journey as well, developing the tools to give yourself the space. But once you have the space, being able to understand that these things that we struggle with, these things that we feel a victim of, that's what it is. This is what it feels like. It's hard. And that's what it is. Now, I want to be very, very clear here. Every Everybody's life experience is different. And I fully accept that people in a different situation to me with challenges that they don't necessarily have any control over will have a much, much more difficult time. However, all of us have the ability to control the interpretation of our own thoughts. So step one for me would be to give yourself some sort of methodology, some sort of strategy for being able to observe your own thoughts, whatever that looks like. Examples, mentioned some of them before, breath work, meditation, journaling, conversation, going for a walk, whether that's five hours a day or five minutes a day, some form of routine or structure to be able to give yourself a little bit of time to separate yourself from situations, to separate yourself from the day-to-day life and give yourself a small bit of perspective. That would be step one for me. Once you've gained this bit of space, looking at the struggles in your life and understanding these are hard and this is what it feels like immediately positions it in a different kind of 
orientation for you as a person when you're able to objectively look at the things you're going through in your life without being in the middle of them right then and there in the moment without having the emotional and impulsive reaction to what that particular struggle is being able to step back for a few minutes and actually observe it again will give you more perspective once you're able to see it once you're able to identify it and once you're able to say yes this is hard and this is what it feels like for me it was a game changer It all of a sudden creates a completely different relationship between you and your struggle. That would be the second step I would follow. If you're struggling, if you realize that the thing you're struggling with is something that you can control, exercise that control. Most of us, not all of us, most of us in our life deal with struggles that we can control. If you can't control the actual struggle itself, you can't control how you think about that struggle. You can control your relationship with that struggle. So if it's something you can control, change the situation, change the environment, change the interaction, change the relationship. That's the first thing. If it's something that you cannot control, control yourself, control your interpretation, control when the input comes from this particular struggle, you are going to have a method for analyzing it, for being objective and observing it, and for dealing with it in the right way. It's not to say that we don't have emotion, we do, but we understand how to interact with our emotions, how to have healthy outlets for our emotions, and how to not impulsively react or respond just based on our emotions. So if you can control it, control it. If you can't control it, control yourself and control how you interact with the emotions. Again, 100% acknowledgement that not everybody can control their situation. For example, if you have a sick dependent who needs 24-hour care, that is a completely different life situation to mine. However, the principles don't change. Maybe you can't change that situation. Maybe you are the primary caregiver and you are under immense pressure and your entire life is a struggle. However, for me, there is huge merit in being able to understand your own mind and your own relationship with this struggle. This is a hard thing. I have not had to experience this and touch wood, I never have. And I have massive admiration for people who are in those situations and keep moving forward. But if I was to put a slightly different perspective on that. This is hard. It is extremely hard. However, there is massive growth for you as a person in that struggle because you are learning to be empathetic, to be caring, to develop yourself, to put your own needs to the side in service of somebody else. And there is huge growth in that. It doesn't mean it is any easier to do what you're doing, but it does mean that you have changed your perspective on what that struggle is. And that is empowering for you. You are no longer a victim of your situation. You are now empowered by your situation. And again, I just want to make it very, very clear. I have a very, very good life and a very, very good support system. I am not advocating here. I'm not preaching from the pulpit. However, I have found this extremely helpful in my situation. And I also know there are many people out there who struggle with the day-to-day operation of their lives. And for me, this has been absolutely game-changing. So that is it. I've gone on for way longer than I thought I would, but I hope you found some value in this. This is simply my experience. It has radically changed how I live my life. It has massively improved the quality of my day-to-day, the quality of my relationships, the quality of my self-talk and my relationship with myself. And it's given me a completely new perspective on this whole idea of struggle. Guys, if you enjoyed that episode, please feel free to reach out with any questions, with any feedback you have. I love hearing from everybody who listens to this podcast. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can find me on Instagram at Primal Pro. If you want to be part of the Primal community and jump on the newsletter, I share my thoughts on topics like this every single Monday on our Primal newsletter. All you have to do is click the link in my bio on Instagram at Primal Pro and the sign up is in there to make sure that you receive those newsletters. Thank you so much as always for listening to the show and I will see you in the next episode.